All right. What's well, good? We're in here. We got uh, we got Big D as per usual, and then we got Alex joining us. What's, what's good, up, man? fellas? What's going on? Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice Excited. To key in the house. Thanks for joining yeah. us. Make yeah, sure appreciate you go. it. Plug plug the show real quick, and then we'll we'll get it rolling. Yeah, Dynasty Football Key. Uh, yeah, man, putting out content uh, every week. You know, a little bit of some pick 'em, some a lot of fantasy. Uh, every Tuesday, we're doing a Dynasty Stock Market with Bigs. Um, it's actually a show that's on the Player Profiler News channel. And uh, yeah, man, uh, it's going great. And I'm working with Player Profiler um, as a YouTube manager over there. And just uh, man, it's a lot of excitement, man. So just yeah. been a fun season and these games still just as unpredictable as ever, man. No doubt. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No yeah, doubt. Yeah. All right. Let's uh, let's jump into it here. Let's kick it back to Thursday because I think, you know, there's two interesting things here. J- obviously, Jaden Daniels and then, you know, f- is is Philly good, right? We were everybody was very concerned about Philly to start the season real close to firing the coach. Uh, it seemed, although maybe in the building it wasn't, but it seemed on the outside looking in that it, it wasn't great. Uh, but it, things have a way of working themselves out when when you're winning. Uh, I think Kellen Moore was was a great hire, and it seems to be working out for them. And Saquon was obviously a, a fantastic uh, addition to what they're bringing in. There's there's few guys in the league who can kind of do. Uh, CMC type stuff and he's one of those guys and the effect that he's having on that team is very much I think like CMC coming over to a team that was already built and ready to roll like Sam Fran was so um, you know Saquon some people were a little worried injuries this and that and Saquon has come out and I think the running backs as a whole I think have stabilized in some people's eyes right guys yeah yeah, I think so. I mean, I think they've kind of, kind of, um, and and it's kind of be expected. They kind of started to solidify, and um, um, I, I was interested in this uh, the Brian Robinson usage in that game. It was kind of, um, sorry, my computer's being cool. There we go. Uh, the Brian Robinson usage in that game uh, was was you know I was like, what what's going to happen with him coming back and Eckler and um, you know the spread out on that and it's it I don't know. I mean. Barkley showed up, uh, you know, commander showed up um, and, and it was a pretty good game all the way, all the way around, in my opinion. I mean, it was it was, uh, you know, there the last two minutes is when most of the Washington team scoring <laughs> happened. though. Yeah, like uh, it was I was hoping for more fireworks. I'm a little biased because I got a lot of Jaden Daniels. So I was pretty nervous there towards the end. But uh, yeah, you, you like to see it. He comes back, Brian Robinson and Eckler still involved, you know, only two carries, but getting a ton of work in the passing game, leading receiver, which it, it's it's almost like we should have seen that coming because there's only Terry McLaurin and Ertz that have been getting targets. And it just doesn't seem like, you know, you know, I wanted it to be Noah Brown, but or Deami Brown, that's just not happening. So no. <laughs> uh, I think we could see more of this from Eckler and, you know, and that's great for a little flex action. But Barkley, I'm worried about the teams I don't have Barkley on when it comes playoff time. So, uh, yeah, that's got me pretty nervous because he can do that most games. And, of course, the game before this, I bet on him to go over 85 yards. And he had been doing that all season long. And then it was against Dallas, which mm. I thought was an easy money matchup. Nope, <laughs> can't get there then. And then next week just goes off for 146. So, yeah. And, yeah. and I got to I gotta hand it to Philly in this one because, I like you said, I mean, this this was a bit closer and really no offense was going anywhere yeah. for a minute. The defenses were playing really well. Um, you know, Gus, Gus had them boys uh, or uh, – who, who I'm drawing a blank on the commander's head coach. Oh, Dan Quinn. Former Dan Quinn. Cowboy I wanted to call him Gus Bradley, but Dan Quinn. Yeah. <laughs> Dan Quinn had it had, you know, and, and maybe the, the old ties with him and Kellen Moore overlapping a little bit, had a little bit of uh, you know, chess matching going going yeah. back and forth there. Um, but they stuck with Barkley, and Barkley really put this game away. Uh Gainwell was starting to get going a little bit, uh, but Barkley really, really put the exclamation point on it. Uh but you know, I, I I agree. I wasn't I wasn't quite sure what to make of Eckler and and but this usage is perfect. Um, Brian Robinson Jr. hasn't been super healthy, uh, but came back in this one and was was fine. Uh, Sixteen carries for sixty three yards. It's only three point nine, but got the touchdown to to kind of help your day out. Uh, Hertz has been been 
pretty solid. Uh, the, the rushing has been back to where you want it to yeah. be as far as your fantasy production. Uh, and, but Jaden Daniels, uh, maybe, man, obviously a little banged up in this one, right? And and didn't didn't quite look like himself. And you know, twenty two of thirty two, one ninety one touchdown interception. What are your guys' thoughts on Daniels moving forward? Because it does seem like. It, Everyone wanted to get real hyped on on him as fast as you could, and I think for good reason. But does anybody just want to pull pump the brakes a hair on Jaden Daniels, or are you completely wheels up on him, Alex? Yeah, I'm still wheels up on him. You do see a drop off. So week seven to now, 50 yards rushing, 52 yards rushing. Then it's 35, then five versus the Steelers, and 18 versus the Eagles. So it's it, you know, and the yards for carries is dropping down every week. Mm-hmm. Um, and he took an early shot in that game. Couple I, of them. I, I've been seeing quarterbacks not sliding. I, I don't know what's going on, but uh, you know he's got to stay healthy. And they were put in a bind, so he's had to throw it anyway. And it, it seemed like I guess Terry McLaurin was completely locked up because McLaurin couldn't really get busy either. So yeah. when you, you know, I don't know if this is true. I'm basically parroting that I, you know, you hear that Cliff Kingsbury gets figured out, right? Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's actually going on right now, but you got a rookie quarterback here. So it's the coach's job to help make things easy for him. So clearly he's thinking too much, you know, taking sacks, and they weren't really able to move the ball until the two minute drill at the end of the game. Um, other, yeah. other than that, it would have been an even worse blowout. Yeah. yeah, I mean, honestly, for me, I kind of expected it to be kind of the game it was. It's a division game, um, Thursday night, kind of sloppy, hurts, uh, <clears throat> not hurts, uh, Jalen Daniels coming in with the rib injury. He, they had to put on additional padding throughout the game. Um, so so for me, I'm, I, I don't know, I, I guess my expectation was if they could be competitive in Philly on a Thursday night game at Philly, right? Like uh, it was at Philly, correct? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, thought it was. Um, I mean, and it, and it, and it the score doesn't quite show up, but I felt like you were you said it earlier, case it was kind of like that defensive battle, and I mean, Philly just has yeah, both teams too, too many, yeah, too. It really beginning. just has too many horses in the in the mm-hmm. you know that's in the stable. rotation, man. They can just keep throwing them out there, and eventually that's going to wear you down. Um, it was it was great to see that Ertz catch, man, old man Ertz, just mm-hmm. yeah. Just and the two point happen in yeah. the back. Yeah, yeah that, was, like, that was gorgeous. And um yeah, for, yeah, so for me, I mean, I'm still still really enjoying Jalen Daniels. I think that, you know, I think he kind of came out of the gate stronger than I was expecting. Um yeah. I I still yeah. would probably pivot off of him if I can get the right price. You know, his ceiling price just like it was so high there for a while. Like you could get yeah. uh, you could move him and get like Drake May and uh, and a first, uh, you know, I, I saw some yeah. crazy deals early on. And so I, I'm sure that it's coming back down, especially now that he's kind of hurt and stuff. But yeah, um, I, I, I but that's not to say that I want to pivot off Jalen Daniels on all my teams. I'm just saying that there is some value there. I think that I could capitalize on while he's still a rookie and still learning, especially mm-hmm. on a championship team. So or or one that was I wasn't expecting to be competing. And all of a sudden I'm competing and I need that depth, you know, going into going into the late run, you know, maybe, maybe Daniels is expendable on a roster like that, but in general, I'm not, I'm not necessarily trading them. And, um, we, ju- and the inverse, right. Of what I just said is that I think a couple games like this and that, that, uh, the boiling point come, comes down a little bit lower, yeah. lower, he may be attainable. Kind of I... like Patrick Mahomes was so unattainable for so long. And now this year he's a lot more attainable than he ever has been. And, and, um, rookies are the same way. They, they shoot like a, you know, like a firework, and then some of them stay high, like like Stroud did until the next season, and now Stroud's having some struggles, right? Um, and Jalen Daniels, oh, that's I think, a great is, point, is is on that. So, yeah, that's a great point. Hey guys, a quick reminder to head over to patreoncom slash Dynasty to sign up for a free membership to get access to the free Discord channel, or hit your boys with the five dollar holler and get access to extra shows, mock drafts, roster reviews, ADP, and player pages. All for your pleasure. I'm always pretty slow on on rookies. I don't. I try not to go too high and too low uh, for for this reason because they're rookies, man. Like, you know, I I think it was ridiculous for people to put 
playoffs on the Bears at all? What, what, what are we doing? That was, and then they're like, "Oh, the Bears aren't going to make the like. Why? Why did we think that that's a rookie? What's happening that here? Forever. <laughs> yeah, like if, if they if it, we could just pull some positives out of it, it's a huge win for them. And same thing with the Commanders. Like this is awesome, right? Beyond uh, ex- best case scenario. <laughs> what, what's that? It's already beyond best case oh, scenario for what yeah, they imagined. No. <laughs> Thousand percent. And and the Kingsbury thing, you know, we saw it with Kyler a little bit, and and he was out absolutely outrageous. And I think things were pretty simple. Um, and then you know, kind of petered off, and and the maybe the system got figured out a little bit. And you know, I, I think that that certainly can happen. A Cliff's left and came back, so I, I would assume that he's added things to the repertoire here. But when we do watch Jaden Daniels and, and Quinion Mitchell did a great job and has been doing an excellent job on everybody's primary guy, the Eagles rookie is phenomenal, um, and and he did a great job out there. And Fangio is is learning this defense and and Fangio to a rookie doing different things. That, you know, with being injured, you got to take all that uh, into account a little bit here. But you know, we. I do think it's been a lot of simple things for Jaden Daniels. And then we got some sexy down the field stuff where we know that was a, a, a window where he really accelerates at, right? He has a beautiful deep ball uh, with, with good accuracy on it. Uh, and, and a guy tailor made it to do that with in F1 there. Right. Yeah. And the rest of the, the rest of the guys around him, you know, pretty, I'd say decent at best outside of Eckler being an excellent pass catcher in an old Ertz. Uh, but like you said, Diami Brown and uh, Zacchaeus or whatever his name is, Noah Brown, like they're going to, they're going to make some moves next year. They got a rookie quarterback yeah. like T, T Higgins could easily be over in Washington next year. You know uh, whether they want, whether you guys feel that that'd be a good move or not yeah. is, is, you know, neither here nor there, but they, they should have some, some room to move about the cabin here with a rookie quarterback um, and, and F1 being in there. So I, I, I kind of I kind of middle it with rookies. I take the good with the bad. I, I don't get too low on them because they are rookies and I try not to get too high on them. But it's like it's as soon as Jaden Daniels is scoring 22 points a game, everybody's like, oh, it's top top four quarterback. I'm like, let's fucking relax here. Yeah, calm down. Let's, let's calm see down. a season and a half of them <laughs> and, and see see kind yeah. of how it plays out. I, I love the poise of the young man. I love that it seems to be dedicated, which is all huge things. Uh, for well, and the team is bought into him too. That was right. my biggest concern was just some of the rumors that you heard, like when he left ASU and and those kind of things. You know, oh, I was yeah. like, oh, I don't know. And um, you know, I I sometimes put too much weight on that stuff, and I'm trying to make my adjustments when I make my rankings and when I'm looking at things. But I, I think he's answered for me all the, all the questions of can he succeed at this level? Yes. Is he a leader? Yes. Um, did Washington luck out? I, I think so. I think they. I think they're in they're in a good position, like you said. Um, and I'm, I mean, and just to comment on that, Cliff Kingsbury, uh, like, yeah, he's had massive struggles in the second half of the season, and, and a lot of that has to do with, in my opinion, anyways, is just his inability to create plays. He's kind of he kind of gets into this. I I can't remember who said it um, out in the in our fantasy community space, but he he gets into this where he puts his key wide receivers into these route bushes instead of route trees, where they're all like. <laughs> hardly down the the line, you know, they're, they're running like the same stuff, but it's all in kind of yeah. a bush format instead of a stretch in the field type of thing. And, and so we'll see going forward, but who they could use, I think in that offensive room is um, Shane Waldron. Oh. And that's a hot take right now, but Shane Waldron is an excellent um, creator of plays. He's just not, he's, he's not, um, he doesn't understand how to sequence. A yeah. Play he doesn't know how to sequence. He doesn't have an art call of, a game. Yeah. Feeling it out. And, 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 and it's tough. I mean, there's, you know, we say there's 32 head coaches There's only 32 offensive coordinators in the league too. And I would say, you know, n- not all of them are, are, are fabulous. That's why there's so much turnover. So, right. um, so anyway, sorry, I went on a no. tangent there, but I, I just kind of feel like the commanders could use a little bit more ingenuity in their in their um, passing scheme. And 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 maybe that's just like you said, Casey, maybe it's just the players like they don't really have anybody that can. I mean, well, I saw, like Noah Brown, but Noah Brown is the third to me, you know, and right. Clarence oh, obviously sure. got he's, yeah. he's got it. But right now they don't have, yeah. um, you know, the, I mean, I love Ertz, too, but they're they're relying on Ertz and he's. You know, he's 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 old, man. He's old. <laughs> yeah, and they got a defensive head coach. So it's just yeah, right. Exactly. 
right? Yeah. I, I think, you know, in the first few games from Daniels, you saw kind of, I forget what the stat was, but we're back. We went back to it here over the last couple of games where everything was within like five yards of the line of scrimmage, right? Not, and then we saw in the middle of that schedule, it loosen up and him do some great stuff. And I think people really were like, oh my God, which is awesome. I'm not trying to downplay what the guy's doing, but like, now we're yeah, he's injured, so that's got you got to take that into consideration. But people have also seen him now a little bit, so everything again for what we just saw in that Eagles game, everything was right in front of him, short five yard, which is fine. Help like we just and we'll get to it here in a minute, but like we just saw the the Bears take it back to that with Caleb, and Caleb was good today, you know. So um, you know that could be really helpful. Get get my man some confidence. You can win game. You don't that don't have to be crazy, right? Um, so I, I don't hate it, but you do have to evolve eventually. And that's really, you know, what, what we'll see, but time, time is the only way to tell that. So, all right, let's, uh, Eagles, good Eagles, best team in the NFC. What do we think here? No, what are you talking about? It's the Lions. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I think that's fair. Um, no way. The Eagles are nice though, man. They're, they're pretty deep and yeah, they got the Ricky's performance. So you can't be mad. I'm a, I'm a Cowboys guy. So I, I was offended by that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, the Lions is the correct answer for pretty much everybody out there, but yeah, <laughs> top, you know, are we, there was a point, like I started this off with where we weren't sure if the Eagles were going to fire a head coach and make the playoffs. And now, yeah. I mean, they're, they're certainly going to be right in the mix of the top teams vying for a buy from the nfc side right yeah and it's like once the guy got her back healthy too it was just all right now what do you even do because there's just you know you got two wide receivers two tight ends you know in theory maybe two running backs and hurts and barkley or uh you know it, you know it's just a lot of weapons all around man. yeah yeah and i think i like i love i've been a big proponent of kellen moore and i think as they get further and further into the season and figure things out i think uh, I think he's a good fit for what they're doing. And, and Jalen seems like it's working for him. So I like it. Um, no, all right, let's. I, I, uh, I, tra- I traded a J- uh, Jalen Hurts for, uh, or I, I traded for Hurts, but I gave away Bo Nix. This was before the season started. Gave away Bo Nix and like, uh, like a first to get Hurts or something like that. But now I'm just like, dang. I might have want to held on to Knicks, but we can wait for that. But dang, <laughs> I think I think you're still all right. I think yeah. you're still all right. Um, all right, let's keep it moving. Next game on the slate, Indy, New York. We don't have to spend a ton of time here because I, I think Alex, as you said before we <laughs> before we started, this was a uh, what'd you call it a an arrival and a burial? Is that what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> resurrection of Anthony Richardson. Yeah, I wore this shirt, FF Dynasty shirt, because I'm back. I'm back on the FF Dynasty uh, Patreon show. What's up, y'all? And uh, Anthony Richardson's back. Let's go. Yeah. Uh, but uh, go ahead and say RIP for Rogers. Rogers yeah, I, in peace. I don't know, man. Um, but yeah, Rogers, dude. Uh, it's Rogers just like, looks like the, he needs that uh, Cliff Kingsbury. Everything five yards or closer down the field. <laughs> Rogers is not letting go of his OC. Not until you <laughs> pry it out of his cold hands. Yeah. <laughs> But we did we did get some Brees action today. Sixteen carries, seventy eight yards. Um, Aaron oh, Rodgers uh, had a seven that. yard carry, so he's one for seven there. Give Brees the ball, good things happen. Holy shit! That's yeah. uh, that's that's crazy. Seven seven targets, seven receptions, forty three yards for Brees, and another touchdown or a touchdown there. So Brees having a good game. I, I would advise all of our people who come with the questions constantly of, about trades for Brees, like just stop trading Brees Hall unless your team's rebuilding. If you got a good team and, and you're anywhere near, like he's a good player and we know it. That's all I need. I'm good. Like we, we do have to worry about the quarterback situation next year and we'll see what that is. Uh, but Can't it's all right. Uh, Bre- Brees has been good without anybody there. So that's, I'm, I'm not all that worried about Brees Hall. Uh, he's, he's a good player. Ex- one of the top, we talked about the CMC type players. Brees is a CMC. Like he's an excellent receiver and you can lean on him. Uh, so just pump the brakes on Brees. But let's let's take yeah. it back. Let's talk about Richardson real quick. Um, and this is, you know, this is what you wanted to see, right? This is, you know, you see a lot of box score watching. You see a lot of fantasy score watching for Anthony Richardson. And I don't know that many people outside of seeing the bad plays being highlighted from Anthony Richardson, which I'm in no way, shape, or form trying to tell you that Anthony Richardson hasn't been bad through stretches of games here, right? Because he's right. he has. He, he's missing layups, all this kind of stuff. But he sits down, and, and everybody takes a victory lap if you were out on Anthony Richardson for whatever reason. And now he's back. 
Um, and nobody's going to say shit today that was taking the victory lap for him being out or tomorrow or this week or whatever. And I don't need to say all that much because my position hasn't really changed whether he went to the bench or not. It's, it's, it's the value of what he can bring. If he could just, he was still scoring some decent fantasy points throughout his, his 10 game career. Like half of them were over 17 points. And, you know, and then this game, he drops 30, he had 10 carries for 32 yards. The two TDs were great. Um, but really he wasn't missing the layups in this one, the layup throws. And then he made some big third down throws, put the ball where it needed to be. Your boy, AD Mitchell had a good one on third down coming on a crosser against sauce and then kind of made a little bit of a, I thought he could have taken that guy to the corner, made a questionable kind of cut back in and, and got yeah. tackled on the one. Uh, but then he made, you know, uh, fourth quarter stuff, two minute drive, made a great throw to Alec Pierce. Uh, down the sideline in, in between defenders and then, you know, just took control of the game. Didn't didn't fuck it up too bad. Um, had some odd exchanges there. Had a fumble that he got back, um, you know, did throw. Um, uh, did, did he have a pick today? No picks. Um, I think he might have lost one of the fumbles, uh, but. You know, I don't know where you guys stand on Anthony Richardson. I'm, I've obviously been out there really, you know, campaigning for the man just because it's not it's not about the the negatives of I, I know he's not. I don't need to like you can bring up any stat you want with Anthony Richardson. I know it's not good. Like I've, I've, yeah. I'm, it's, <laughs> I, I'm not I don't need to, to see it. I just I need to be able to be like, all right, well, let's give this guy some time. Let's give this guy some reps. And when, if he can just hit the layups and we can get up to the 15 to 17 points per game kind of stuff, and then we bring the legs back and get the running involved, and then we hit some deep shots, and then all of a sudden, 20 points a game is very easy for Anthony Richardson to obtain. And then we can really, we, he can break fantasy in a quarter of good play, right? So that, that's really the idea of Anthony Richardson and, and why I'm, I'm not ready to bail on him. Just like we talked about with the rookies, I don't want to get too high, too low. Like, Jaden Daniels yeah. has played five years of college football at a high level. You know, it's just we, we, it's, it's it's well documented how little Anthony Richardson has played. Be patient. Like you're gonna have to take some of the good with the bad. It, it is what it is. It, you know, he came back and responded here. That that was a great thing to see. And and the he, he wasn't he didn't come back in here with with you know. I guess a bad attitude. It seems like he cleaned some things up and, and the accuracy was a little better. I don't know what changed. I don't know if he feels more confident. Sometimes a little sit down could be just what the doctor ordered. Um, you know, Bryce, I think is looking better from sitting down, uh, yeah. you know, got a, got a little swagger back. So I don't know. How do you guys feel about Anthony Richardson moving forward? Uh, I'll, I'll start with big D. No, I mean, I, I've never been out. So, you know, he's, he's still, he's still in that, uh, start up what probably end of the first for me. I don't know if that's Ooh. too high for some, but I but, think I think we just did one and he went in the fourth. Wow! Wow! wow. I missed okay. that one. Well, then and that was that was that was before <laughs> he was he was he was benched on that go yeah. round and Flacco was the starter for the rest of the Long year. Panic. So. Yeah, <laughs> so <laughs> it's it's aggressive in my opinion, but it's just he's he's and I, I've stated this on a few pods, so I'll keep it short. But basically, you know, when when you look at um, a player like Anthony Richardson, you also see. Um, you know, hints of Josh Allen and you see hints of Jalen Hurts and and even Lamar to a point. And and the reason why I bring those guys up is like I love Joe Burrow. I love CJ Stroud. You know, I really liked it. Um uh, well I didn't I don't know if I really liked off the field, but Tom Brady, you know, he had some amazing years. But when you're talking about pocket passers, they have to have a really good game and a good game from the players around them to really produce, right? Or or have those key studs like Chase or uh, Moss back in the day or, you know, those kind of things where Anthony Richardson, he has the ability to win your week on a bad game, you know, and, and I think mm-hmm. we've seen that now his, his floor is a little lower. And I think in the long run, his, um, his ability to hit that small and, and, and intermediate stuff, the, the, the gimmies, right. You, I think you said that Casey, it was mm-hmm. like his ability to do that on target and be accurate. You know, he needs to be above the 69 or 70% threshold, whatever that number is for, completion rating uh, overall he needs to be in like the 80s on that stuff at least uh, especially on the gimmies it should be more like 90 but i think once he does that and once he continues to get rhythm man i i for me he has t- he has quarterback one like overall upside and you know there's not a lot of players that have that without having massive seasons and i don't think anthony richardson needs to be the best quarterback in the league to be the best quarterback in fantasy 
Yeah, yeah, Alex. man. Uh, and it's crazy. The Colts only two games have been decided by more than a touchdown. Man, they're always in these close mm-hmm. battles, and I feel like that maybe is why they went to Flacco because they felt like they're so close to just just don't make a mistake and we can get there. But <laughs> you, you know, Flacco doesn't have it, and I think you're right. Like sometimes just taking that time off is good for you. And I don't think they're giving the job back. I mean, that was a nice win. Not sure what their you know playoff hopes are and all that, but uh, that's a great indicator that he's locked in for the rest of the season as a starter so uh you know with the rushing outside just like uh like you said with Jaden daniels like you know the whole rookie thing you gotta give him time but also there's things that we come in knowing that they're deficient in so daniels we're wondering can he stay healthy you know he's a little banged up now anthony richardson we knew he was raw and mm-hmm. can he learn and develop and i think we're still wanting to see more from that angle but to your Josh Allen point, Big D, this guy, Anthony Richardson, has the weapons. You're not going to be able to teach those, you know, 50-yard, 60-yard throws that he's got. So, uh, team's going to go back to him. And I like seeing A.D. Mitchell emerge here because um, he can't have enough weapons for this guy to have a good shot. I think you're yeah. on mute. Yeah, I am. Sorry. I, I'm not quite sure why um, Mitchell isn't getting enough snaps or getting, getting, getting a good I, amount I think of Pierce snaps. is just keeping him off. Yeah, but Pierce is just what he's just in the cardio Olympics out there, man. Like <laughs> at least Mitchell can. I mean, I I like Pierce too. I think he's all right, but he's big and fast, and they get they get him down the field. They'll they'll take shots. I mean, Mitchell had an had an okay role today. I think Mitchell's had a couple of spots where he he kind of let him down a hair. So it's been kind of like up and down usage with with Mitchell. But I think you're right. I think great great weapons surrounding him. Uh, Josh Downs being as good as Josh yeah. Downs has been is is also probably hindering. Uh, some AD Mitchell well, as well. I also think it's there. I don't know what it is with Steichen and his his tight end usage, but they they do a lot of twelve personnel, and mm-hmm. uh, which you yeah. know obviously limits that. They're that dying to get a receiver. Tight end there. Um, dying. <laughs> they won't. Yeah, want are, like RIP Michael Branson, Mo Ali Cox, and um, Ogletree. Ogletree. Thirty-two yeah. um, snaps today. Twenty-eight snaps. Twenty-five snaps. AD Mitchell twelve snaps. <laughs> you know, yeah. I'm just like, what? Wait, what? Uh, I know some of of that is blocking. And and, I mean, the other thing that needs to be stated is this was a road game against the Jets and the Jets have a decent defense. So, you know, is I mean, Zach was pointing out the want to of the Zach, the the, the defense of the Jets currently. And it's certainly not the Jets defense that we've known over the last year, year and a half. Uh, But Mm -hmm. still, nevertheless, like I don't even really care about the defense that they're playing. I want to see how Richardson is operating. It doesn't matter. Like when, you know, when we talk about Drake may, like, I don't care what the team's doing. Some of the bad things he does, like, how is he operating the pocket? How's he operating the offense? That's really what matters to me. And and I think we saw a good step forward from Richardson and and are are the jets great? No, I don't think so. I think we're, we're, we're seeing, uh, you know, a a team that's probably fairly broken right here, but Hey, that's what it takes to get you back on track. And it's not like there's those good players are still, there right i mean it's not like it was a blowout either i mean they were richardson had to bring him back to win this game right right so oh yeah um and uh shout out to josh downs still getting it done yeah that was the big concern i had so uh i'm i'm good man he's the wide receiver one i mean Pittman had the most targets but downs five for five 84 yards touchdown let's go yeah, I don't. I don't. I, Pittman, I don't think has been right most of the season. Uh, but he's out yeah, there. I don't think he was right today. I, I actually it out. In, in, disc, uh, in the Discord. I was like, I didn't even know Pittman was out there today. <laughs> like, yeah, because I was just kept coming in and out of this game, and I'm, and then all of a sudden I saw him. I'm like, oh, he caught a big one. Much of an one. impact. Uh, so. But yeah, I mean Richardson's good. Uh, Taylor had a lot of run, but was was not very good in this one. Couldn't couldn't really get anything going. So they did keep the run game at bay. Um, but Taylor's kind of the one that I've been kind of kind of not not off of don't don't get me wrong but i've I've kind of i don't know i guess you could say soured a little bit on like I've, i feel like he's had some ability here where uh he should be in my opinion he should he should have a little bit more juice since he's healthy and uh, i don't know i don't know what yeah. it is uh, maybe it's just the way the offensive scheme I, I can't say that the offensive line's been horrible like i i i don't know i i i ended up moving him yesterday in a league that has a Kind of has a late um, 
or an early, sorry, not late, or early tread, trade deadline. And I moved him for um, Odunze, Jalen Wright, and which should be like 104 to 106. There we go. Mm. I like it. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, I, I, that team is still competing because then I went out and I sent um, uh, the rookie wide receiver in, uh, from the Rams and, uh, and the rookie yeah. wide receiver in, in, um, and, and another one that kind of popped off that I got off the waiver wire. And I, I turned around and got Eckler um, just to kind of bolster that that spot that yeah. I lost with, uh, cause it's a competing team still, but I just couldn't, couldn't pass up getting some youth on that team. Cause it was getting sure. old. But anyways, that my whole point of rambling on that besides, um, saying how cool I am, uh, was, <laughs> um, was that, you know, I, I just, I, I don't know, man. It's like, I, I want JT to be JT of the past, but it feels like he's, I don't know. Ho- hopefully there's going to be some, some games out here coming up that he's just going to, you know, completely nail it. And, and I, I'm rooting for it. I'm not, an, I'm not anti JT at all, but it, it just, there's something about it that just doesn't feel right. To yeah. so. It's not the same as like when Lamar opens up the run lane and not even for Derrick Henry. I'm talking about even in other years where Lamar is yeah. opening up run lanes for guys, but yeah, with Richardson, I just don't think Richardson has the identity yet of what he's yeah. doing. So it's yeah. just the offense just isn't there yet. One day to get there, I, I don't think that'll be this year when it's just a full cylinder, everything's clicking mode, but uh, it'll get there. It and, seemed and like the Jets, long were, term. the Jets were going to say, hey, we're not going to let you run all over us. We're going to we're going to make you pass. I, I think JT's had a had a pretty decent year as far as, you know, stats and, and he could have had easily had a touchdown in this one. Um, I believe it, last week or the week before he we got him all the way down to the one two on a on a on a longer run um, and didn't didn't score. Uh, but. You know, like to your guys' point about with Anthony Richardson and, and you're hoping that JT, I think that's a good point, Alex, that it's not, not really an identity. And I don't think Richardson's really trying to run right now, right? Like he's yeah. trying to prove that he can do some other things. Uh, they got down to the goal line and they did run kind of some, you know, power oh, yeah. sweeps. That's what I was going to ask you, man. Are you worried about him just putting that shoulder right into people? <laughs> I mean, at the, goal line, older, man. I, at the goal yeah. line, I'm cool with it. Do do what you got to do, baby. I mean, especially if you kind of know that that's what the play, like this is what we're doing. We're going out here. We're going to run this. You know, I, I don't want you to be just scrambling. And Well, and, when you say goal line, you're, you're saying goal line when they're in the goal line offense too, right? Like that. that's the one thing I don't want him to do is is – He's sprinting from the twenty yard line, and he goes full in with his shoulder going up against somebody who's coming up against oh, him. Oh, I see like, what you mean. Yeah, yeah. yeah like, I, I don't hard. mind him hitting like an offensive lineman, right? Like you, you get a three or five yard start, and and then you know your your corner or your linebackers coming up and hitting them with the three or four yard start. Like to me, that's not as big a deal than if he broke it wide open and then he's trying to take you know, off. He's running thirty yards at 20, that, yeah. 20 miles yeah. an hour, and then he tries to put his shoulder into somebody like that. That's not. That's like running into a brick wall, man. Yeah. Don't, don't yeah. do that. Like, <laughs> yeah. So yeah. That, that, that's that's like. So what he was doing at the goal line, I I didn't mind that part. Um, yeah, same. You know, but um, and and the other side of it is like. I, I don't know what it is with, I mean, I, I know it's just the competitive spirit, but, um, you know, you look at Tua and he just, I would rather you, I would rather Tua lead with his shoulder than his head, <laughs> you know? And so it's like, I don't want to, I, I would rather not, not either yeah. of them <laughs> go with both, but if you're going to pick a body part that you don't want somebody to lead with it, like the head is the biggest thing for me. Yeah. Like, the, the shoulders can be repaired. The head uh, can't, unfortunately. So, yeah. All right, let's uh, let's keep it moving off that game. Uh, good good win for the for the Colts there, and good win for Anthony Richardson for for you know obviously I'm I'm a big proponent of of giving giving him a chance and and uh, letting him see what he could do there. So I like that. I'm glad he was back in there. Flacco was indeed not elite again. So let's go Green Bay Chicago here. A, a, a big old school matchup. Uh, you got the monsters of the midway coming to get the pack, and then it came down to the last second and and just couldn't get it done with the field goal there. Uh, where Caleb heartbreaking and, and, for the heartbreaking for any of the Bears fans. Man. I was, you know, I was really yeah, rooting flashbacks. for for Caleb mm-hmm. and and the Bears to get the dub here. I thought I thought it was a, a good game to bounce back. It seemed like after that terrible loss to the Commanders, they just kind of really just everything went to shit for him there. You know, while that game wasn't great, Caleb was decent in the fourth quarter, and we then mm-hmm. we just hadn't seen that team. They just they just seemed like they were a mess. Everything was out of sync. Um. They switch play callers here, and you know we alluded to it already. I thought in in this game they just got quick stuff, easy stuff for Caleb to get going, get some confidence. Just kind of we talked like with Jaden Daniels and and Cliff, easy stuff around the line of scrimmage, get it to your back. Swift's a very capable guy, get him out in space. 
get Komet involved again. Cause in the beginning of the season, they had Komet kind of rolling a little bit. And I thought they did a good job with, with getting Rome involved uh, in this game as well. Uh, Roma Dunze had 10 targets in this yeah. one, so, so led, the, led the team. Yeah, uh, with that and and made some big catches. You know, Keenan Keenan looks like he's not quite the old Keenan Allen of old, and and but you know he had a couple big snags in this one. DJ Moore looked like he was kind of getting it back rolling. He he's the one that's been bothering me most of the season. He doesn't he didn't look super interested throughout a lot of this season, and and this game he did kind of look like uh, they were they were all in on on kind of what was going on. So Thomas Brown, I believe, is his name getting the getting the play calling duties here. I thought he did a great job week one. We'll see kind of how that continues. But uh, Caleb goes 23 of 31 for 231. No touchdowns, no picks. Um, but, you know, they, they, did, they did get a score with DeAndre. Great touchdown run. Uh, awesome, awesome blocking to set that, that one up. The, the O-lineman cleaned somebody out on a pull around there. Uh, but, you know, inevitably the Bears do not get it done. The Packers get it done. Josh Jacobs has a good day. Five receptions or uh, four receptions, 58 yards, uh, adds another 76 yards on the ground, 7.2 yards per carry and a touchdown. Jordan Love ran for a touchdown here. Jaden Reed, I believe, caught a touchdown. Yeah, yeah, Christian, right at the beginning of the game mm-hmm. and then crickets after that. I was like, yeah, Christian I Watson, be a big game. <laughs> oh, Christian Watson yeah. got it going downfield, um, had some big catches. And this I is started them. This is, uh, yeah, right. <laughs> this is. This is what Christian Watson is the push in the pool. We know that it could be really good, right? We we know that it could be explosive and a playmaker and and uh but it's 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 so hard to trust him right now, right? So you you you're just kind of stashing him uh away and seeing what can happen. I did I did start him in a league, but it was basically a league that I'm terrible in and I didn't really have a whole lot of options to start him because I'm I'm I blew the whole thing apart. Um but yeah, you know, it's, he's, another, it's he, another sell window for Watson in my opinion. Okay, what's yeah. what's uh, what's your guys' thoughts on Christian Watson? You, you said sell well, window here. What do you think, Alex? Well, yeah, and I love Big D. You can have it, but I just wanted to say, like we we were really thinking that the only excuse was maybe the hamstring imbalance, and we haven't seen anything all season, so it clearly wasn't that. Uh, I know Love missed a couple of those early games to get some chemistry, but at this point, we should have seen something more for Christian Watson, and I just think overall. It's still you still have Reed on the team. You still have Dubs who they like, and um, you know for whatever reason they target Don- Dontavian Wicks a, a ton, right? And, and the yeah. tight ends, and you know so uh, even Jacobs a ton of uh, not a ton, but you know five targets for Jacobs. The point is, it's still a lot of guys, so yeah. I can't count on this every week. Yeah, big deal. Yeah, I mean just ditto what you said. I, I, it's not necessarily Watson. It's just the role that he has on the team. I just he's he's. Um, you know, and I say this uh, comping a lot of these type of players. He's a different play style, but he he has that that sprinter mentality. You know, like MVS has right now for the for New Orleans. I mean, he's only getting like three to four targets a game. He's playing like sixty percent of the snaps, and it's kind of boom or bust with him. And so he's a great DFS. You know, like those type of type of plays uh, or a large like if you have a if you have a large bench and you've got like multiple flex spots, you know, like we have a couple of the, the FFD Patreon leagues that are, you know, like there's like five flex plays, right? Like he's a, that's the type of player. I like him on those kind of teams, but your traditional 12 team start 11, you know, one or two flex. Like for me, he just doesn't have enough of that oomph and upside um, to, to, to in comparison to, the market of what his value is like, I feel like I can still on these up games. I still like, I feel like I can trade him plus a piece and go up a tier or two. Um, and, and in my opinion, it's like two or three tiers because he, he's down. He's always been down low in my rankings and he hasn't, he hasn't climbed. So, yeah. um, yeah, no, I feel you. I feel you. Uh, the Packers uh, wide receiver core is always a bit of a mystery. I, I Jaden Reed is, is, you know, I think, I think the clear, lead guy in that one but like you said you know good 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 to start and then disappeared the bears defense is a good defense uh um, bears defense yeah. is a good defense and there wasn't a lot of out- offensive output from the packers right. in general like right. 17, in general uh, 17 attempts by jordan love um yeah and you if you look at their their stats on all their receivers like um you know there there, there just wasn't a lot to to be just well we, if you only have 17 attempts there's not going to be that much distribu- right yeah right distribution which is not typical for what they're going to do and they yeah, yeah, yeah. Of them. but the bears, the bears defense 
have have throughout the season let 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 an opening driver a first quarter TD in and then have you know Settle been down. shutting people down yeah. for a lot of the uh, you know making the adjustments. Eberflus for whatever he is or isn't is a good defensive coach and they have a good defense. Um, so that seems to have kind of bounced back a little bit. You did see Caleb get it going on the ground here, which is something that he is very capable of doing. Seventy yards rushing. Oh, yeah. but like I said, this was just very much reminded me of what they were doing with Jaden Daniels early here, and yeah. and Caleb got kind of this like, hey, take take the running lane, take off and go get the first down, keep the chains moving, and then take these quick five ten yard plays. You can make all these throws, get it going. We'll take a shot down the field here or there, um, and, and keep the confidence going, keep the chains moving. Uh, I thought the Bears did a great job today. I, I, lo- I love to see it. No worries for me at all from Roma Dunze. If people are down on him, buy him. Um, I love this connection kind of moving forward. I don't think Keenan Allen will be on this team. If he is, it'll be a very reduced role moving forward, I think. Um, mm-hmm. And you know, well, and you could see that that um, Caleb is going towards Odunze on mm-hmm. important spots, like on those fourth down. They're mm-hmm. one of the fourth downs. He, he the big fourth downs on, Caleb um, played, picked up the, you know, and, and I thought did a great job today with. Yeah, yeah, and he was targeting Odunze on a lot of those like yeah. have to have it type of plays. So I think the chemistry is just going to continue to build there. He's so good, man, and I, I just think that I don't know if it's a Thomas Brown thing. And we have seen games where Odunze has been targeted pretty heavily and and involved pretty heavily, and that maybe only one or two has panned out. But I think this is a good effort to to kind of help them out, get them going, and then you know I think inevitably it'll help. DJ Moore and Swift as well, kind of keep this thing going. Yeah. And I, I do strongly believe that Komet's got to be somebody who's got four for 50 most games. To I feel like he's just a big part of take these easy middle completions, uh, out completions, get a Dunze and, and uh, more kind of spreading the ball around, stretching the field around, and then get 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 Komet going. I think he's he's a big part of kind of generating offense, generating drives and keeping them going. But I, this was a fun one to watch. Uh, we should, I think we're about to get potentially Marshawn Lloyd back here soon. Um, yeah, I think so. What do you, how yeah, you, he said he had appendicitis randomly. So yeah. I think that delayed his, <laughs> yeah. Well, back. Trying to, I think they're trying to work with the NFL cause he was in the 21 day window and then he got the, the appendicitis or whatever. And so now they're like, if he does, if they're not able to get him suited up or whatever, then he can't play for the rest of the season. So, I think oh. they're trying to figure that part out. I, I don't know what the resolution is. can't just was. put him in a suit and have him sit on the bench. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know where he's at. That's I'm, brutal. Yeah. Just get it. Just just put put a jer- his jersey on somebody yeah. and put a picture yeah, on his face. Boy, you know, and just yeah. have him have the helmet on the whole time. And then, yeah. yeah, like one of those like uh, pictures inside. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm so something that's definitely something to monitor, but I'm I'm really interested to see him getting back in here. The Packers have traditionally been a team who who uses a two back rotation. Right. Um, and I, I, I really like Lloyd. Um, I'm, I'm really intrigued to see what he can do aside Josh Jacobs uh, with, with this team. Were, were you guys either one of you? I think you were you liked Lloyd a little bit, Big D. Where were you at on Lloyd preseason, um, Alex? Yeah, I liked him. He had the highest, uh, you know, yards for reception, uh, even though it was on the low sample size since Caleb was always launching it to the other receivers. But uh, he still was taking advantage of whatever was getting thrown his way. So he had good numbers, like from what he was, you know, efficiency wise in the passing game. So I figured he might be that um, pass catching back. You know, I I want to see if he could actually be a lightning. Like, if I want to give him the lightning name to mm-hmm. make Josh Jacobs Thunder, but yeah, uh, he would definitely be that pass catching dump off back. Um, you know, whether Love needs that or not, with all these other weapons, who knows? But yeah, and Jacobs I was excited with him. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, he had those four catches. Um, you know, Emmanuel Wilson's been doing his thing. They, who yeah. the other guy got in there too, though? Uh, Chris Brooks. He, yeah. I saw he had a nice couple catches. I, I remember seeing one of them. Um, so, uh, like they, they want somebody in that spot. Uh, yeah, they just gotta get Lloyd healthy. And I just don't think it'll be this season that he's really cooking because you gotta, you don't have any chemistry. It, it, we've seen it with like, like a Kendra Miller type, like Mm. even, even like they're, they're not gonna be ready until later, man. Like you need all that time that you missed to just build something. And now you're going cold Turkey into the you know, yeah. Full NFL season. If you can get them in there, they'll get them in there slow and and see yeah. what they can we can get with them. But I I like uh I like Lloyd. I've I've been in, in redraft yeah. leagues. I've been stashing them in IR just in case uh 
something happens. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's always my move right before the, you know, I make a way, uh, an ad like not the waiver, but just like the regular free agent. I'm like, mm-hmm. who's on IR? And I picked up Lloyd. <laughs> Could I pick times. him up? Thielen's Could been chilling over there for me in a yep. couple. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think Lloyd was my running back four coming out of this last draft class. Nice. So I, I'm, I'm pretty high on him. I've been high on him. I remember watching his film. Um, I don't remember all the notes. I don't have my notes in front of me, but I remember saying, yeah, why, why is this guy, you know, it was like his, is he transferred, right? He transferred yeah. out or something. He and his, went to USC to USC. Did he go? I thought yeah. okay. Oh, uh, anyway, South Carolina, I he South Carolina to to uh, yeah, uh, Southern Cal. Southern Cal. Yeah. yeah, that's what it was. And in South Carolina, the way they were using them just looked so much better than what they were doing at USC. Yeah. Um, and, and anyway, so it, it, I I he grew on me a lot, lot, uh, a lot more than um, I thought he was going to at the beginning. So yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I don't. They don't have anybody back there. Um, I think um, you know. Josh Jacobs is one of those. He's he's a great he's a great back, but I, I feel like Lloyd has the ability to kind of eat into that a little bit. Um, so it would be interesting if he comes back yeah. just to see how that split goes. It might be a volume thing for Jacobs. You know, if yeah. Lloyd's there and good, like he he could get some work. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I agree. All right, let's keep it moving here. Detroit, Jacksonville, not going to spend a whole lot of time here. Detroit waxed yeah. uh, them. Uh, Jared oh, wow. Goff. The 24, 29, 412 yards, four TDs. Uh, Amon Ross St. Brown had it himself a day. Uh, 11 for 11, 161. Jamison Williams, six for four, 124. Two TDs for Amon Ra, one for St. Or uh, one for Williams. No Laporta in this contest, no problem. Montgomery and Gibbs, both good. Um, you know, Jacksonville, hopefully tomorrow's the day that we see everybody fucking gone. Oh, Jesus. man. <laughs> I, I just I don't understand how you can even consider keeping that guy in the building. I wanted Doesn't. to see could Brian Thomas Jr. still just do something with he Mac did. Jones, and he, you know he did. So I was happy about that. And Ingram keeps getting his. So you yeah. know, at least they're not completely tanking these guys where they have no value at all for this yeah. season. I mean, but uh, yeah. yeah, it's it's rough. Uh, I, it sounds like Lawrence may come back, but it's kind of a lost season. But he's a paid guy, so you think. As long as he's not worried about getting a re-injury, then why not get out there? Uh, but yeah, he might magically feel better if Press Taylor yeah. and uh, like Doug Peterson. Are <laughs> <Adams. Yeah. laughs> uh, but no, I mean, if I'm Jacksonville and and I fire those guys, I might even just say, hey, unless he unless he is feeling very good, just sit out, let Mac Jones do this. Let's see where our record goes, you know, yeah. and and it's probably the safe play. Take it from there. So get, get Travis um, Hunter. Yeah, yeah. Uh, next game, you got Vegas, Miami. Another one where I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time here. Two have made it through the game, which is Ooh, is excellent. Hey. We're getting to a, a you know back Didn't in the it. swing of things, looking better and better each week. Twenty eight to thirty six, two eighty eight, three TDs. Gardner Minshew, two eighty two, two TDs and a pick. Brock Bowers absolutely slaying it in this one. Sixteen targets, thirteen receptions, one hundred twenty six yards and a touchdown. Uh, he's 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 Alex awesome. Powers, maybe I'll be interested to see who who is going to end up as the Raiders quarterback and head coach for next year because uh, you know Brock Bowers is is quite the gem just sitting there waiting for. I mean, obviously he's he's doing his thing with with Gardner because Gardner's not a bad quarterback, but you know I I'd, I'd love to see Shador in the uh, in the silver and black there. Man, I don't. I don't know if Dion would allow that, but I'm still hoping he goes to the Saints. But I hear you. Who's that, Shador? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I love him with Olave. Old um, scratch says, so, "How big a difference is T too? How big of, from from Bowers? I mean, I don't. I, I would for me, I'd probably go Trey McBride as tight end two, or you know, tight end one, or same same kind of tier. Um I don't. I, obviously, Bowers is just slaughtering it right now. I mean, we've we've seen yeah broke the other record. guys, other guys put up some some numbers as well uh, in, the, in previous years. You know, I don't I don't think anybody. Well, I started off the season. I probably swapped an opportunity to get Bowers, and I at for and traded for Trey McBride. Right. Um, would I do that running it back? Probably not. But I, you know, I'm I played it safe, and I don't, I don't, I'm not a terribly upset about it. I think Trey McBride is still excellent. Oh, yeah. Um, 
but you know, and and this could ebb and flow so quickly. Of you know, that obviously Devonte was there. You know, you get a different quarterback and you spread targets around. Look, Brock Bowers is still going to be good. Will he be this good? I'm, is there any thought of me really selling in too many situations? Not really. I know I sold. We sold in a tripod where the three of us own two Alex in a team, but it's a complete rebuild. And it was Brian Thomas for Laporta, so it's still a good tight end and another player. You know, yeah, so, I would do that. <laughs> I, you know, I don't, I didn't, we didn't. Neither me and Big Co were like, I don't want to trade Bowers at all. But like, this is a team that needs, you know, a little bit more. And you know, so it was, it wasn't, it wasn't my favorite trade to make, but it was. I think it was a really good trade for the team. I had team to come overall. strong. I had to come yeah. strong with it. <laughs> um, so yeah, yeah, no, it was. It was. There was no counter. There was no anything. I don't, there was no backup. That was one of those ones. Where it was like, damn, this is a. This is a, he put his balls on his ta- on the table <laughs> yeah. here. So you know. Trying to uh, win the title. So. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so. man. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's crazy. Myers the leading rusher in this game. So <laughs> pre- pretty rough, man. You know, I had to take the, the beginning of the season. Zamir White was going to be good. And that was blown way the fuck up in my face. Yeah. So uh, at least I got Bowers right um, because the rest of this team is is done, man. So uh, I'm, I would love to see what the team looks like next year. Yeah. How, where all right we're before we'll, we'll move on real quick but where are we where where do we have Achan in the hierarchy yeah. of running backs right now for you guys is is it top five top six top ten where where are we where are we laying our our hearts and heads on uh Achan right now in June I had him top six um he's probably still there for me I, he might be maybe bumped up a bit because like I was just saying JT I'm a little I'm a little You're taking cross on over him. over Kyron. Uh, I yeah. am okay. How about because uh, A chain to me is kind of like um, the discussion that we had about the quarterback, the running quarterback. You know, Anthony mm-hmm. Richardson. It's it's the upside, right? It's like if you're if you're just talking talent to talent, um, you know, as mm-hmm. far as the position goes, A chain uh, A chain isn't probably the best, you know, most talented back out there. But his ceiling is one of the best talented backs out there, right? And that's and kind of like the Gibbs situation. Like, and so for me, it's like he he's he's high in my rankings because he's one of those players that um he, he can single handedly win you the week in my in my opinion. So Saquon yeah. or Achan? Achan. Oh well, I'll take Saquon. I think I'm still going Saquon, but I'm it's, it's there for them boys to be in the same tier and and a ooh is uh is is yeah. awesome. Um, so I I, well, I like it. Say, yeah, because I can imagine a world where yeah. Tua doesn't have Tyree Kill and now instead of a big stretch field type of play, Tua is more of a dink and dunk type of guy. Mm-hmm. Like you see how your boy Chase Brown is getting all these dump offs. Not I don't know about this game that's happening right now, but like I could see Ed Chan in that role at some point where he's getting mm-hmm. all of these dump offs. Like right. it'd be an excellent. He's happening time. right now. He's fuck. He's yeah. he's the WR two on this team. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know. It's I mean, well, obviously Waddle right now isn't isn't doing what you expect Waddle to do. So maybe you're right. At some point, it goes Tyreek leaves Waddle. You can still take a shot with, but it's a lot of over routes and and stuff going across the field where A Chan can you know kind of do what he's doing now. He, he's He's been excellent, and and you know anybody right now is fortunate to get the points from A Chan in their lineup. It, it's it's pretty awesome. Um, yeah, right, no, I agree. Forward. There's there's no argument there. I I mean, I think straight up, if you're just talking straight up for Barkley, I I I don't think I would trade A Chan for him. I guess is what I was looking at in startup. Mm-hmm. I probably am gonna you know I I might reach for Barkley over just depending on how my my team set up right, but but I don't know. To me, there's there's Barkley's having a great season in Philly, but this is the first season, and he's yeah he's 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 had some trouble when he was with the Giants, and and so um, I, I think I'd need a little bit more consistency from him. Where I feel like Achan is is consistent, and we and just, the fact that he's getting better um, each time that I see him, he, he he seems like he's hitting the hole with more confidence. He's he's looking good, and and again, there's nothing against Barkley. I mean, Barkley's one of the best. When we talk about talent, if if we were ranking talent, he's uh, HM is way down and Barkley is way up as far as, as that goes. I'm just talking from a fantasy perspective. I feel like there are so many weapons in Philly that there could be game stretches where Barkley is good, but just not like he has been lately. So, yeah. Um, 
we just did a, a, a mock startup. Um, HN went three seven. Barkley went three nine. So yeah, so it's right, right there. there. Yeah, right there, right there. Uh, let's switch over to LA, New England, real quick. Not going to stay long on this one. Drake May had a, another decent game. Bad pick to end the day, but I'm I don't care. Like that doesn't yeah. matter to me. That's all um, right. Thirty for forty two eighty two. Two touchdowns, interception, uh, very fi- fantasy viable. Uh, Rams go in there, get a dub. Kyron, 15 for 86. Uh, Drake May, three carries for 27 yards. Ramondre, 20 carries for 73. Cooper Cup doing Cooper Cup things. Six receptions, 106 mm. yards, two TDs. Puka having a day, seven for 123 and a touchdown. When those two, yeah, when those two guys are on the field with Stafford, man, yeah. Uh, they're going to get theirs one way or another. Uh, and then, you know, you get Hunter Henry, six for 63. If May's out there, you could pretty much count on Hunter Henry getting you, having you a decent day. Uh, you could fire him up. I have no idea who, uh, I don't even know how to pronounce his name. Vidarian Lowe, maybe? Oh, the, man, wow. <laughs> he had a, he yeah. had the other touchdown outside of oh, Kendrick yeah, Bourne I saw that big for the Patriots. Yeah. Yeah. I was <laughs> Never like, heard of this man in my life. <laughs> Like, I feel like I should know this because yeah. you know of what we do, but I'm like I have no clue that person. Don't even know what position he plays. T. Is this Good one of those halftime um, yeah. Uh, yeah. competitions? Yeah. Or? Uh, so you know, I, I expected the Rams to get this one. Patriots, um, you know, just okay at best uh, week to week. But Drake May is is a shining star for this organization, and they've they've I think they've got what they need going into next year. And I you know I like. I like what we're seeing from him. So excited about excited about my Drake May stock for sure. Um, Cleveland, New Orleans, not going to really spend any time here. We're real quick on the Rams. And, yeah. and I know this is a fantasy show, but man, um, what they did to replace, um, you know, the goat there um, oh, the defense uh, and on the defensive side of the ball oh. with Fisk and um, verse. Uh, verse is like we, it sucks for the nfc west but it's all awesome. oh, dude it's horrible for the nfc west but 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 just in general we was like yeah you can't replace aaron donald you've got to you know you got to put in two players well they got two fucking players that can replace aaron donald those those boys are bad man. yeah they're, they're, they're awesome, awesome. They, they've done such a good job on defense getting parts and pieces and yeah. they were they were doing it in the later rounds and then they had some they effed them picks for a minute then they had some picks and they smashed those too yeah well and that's the thing with mcveigh man everybody's like he's such a brilliant you know offensive mind but that dude that knows his defense too like he knows the talent and he knows the defense and either that or he's putting the right he's, he knows how to delegate and relegates you know who who what when where how to pick those guys well uh, i've watched so, them which on is just as important as anything and you see when somebody gets picked like that turns out to be pretty decent. He's like, son of a, you know, he's all, yeah. he's all upset, so. Uh, yeah. So Cleveland gets, gets run over by, uh, yeah. by, by the Saints. Reindeer. Oh, yeah. the reindeers. Um, MVS having himself a couple of weeks here. Uh, oh, man. A, what do you, what are you trading for MVS? Fucking. Uh, I'm trading. My, uh, yeah. my, my co host on the Dynasty Stock Market threw a trick question at me last episode and was like, So, what are you trading for MVS after his last week's big game? And I was like, Nothing. Yeah. <laughs> and then he, you know, has another big touchdown here. I'm like, Huh, maybe a fifth. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, maybe a fifth. There you go. Kadarius Tony. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh. Taste uh, uh, Yeah. I mean, I, I think he's, um, he's Sammy. I don't know. He, he, he's got to me. And, and I, I know that people don't always like comps, but I try to, think of it in the way of like how they play but he's kind of like the sammy watkins type of he's gonna have some great games and then he's just gonna be go back in his little hut yeah yeah um jerry judy had a good one and this one had a big long touchdown but judy's been the all the all the browns wide receivers man have been very startable for the week since Jameis has been in there yeah Um, and jerry judy's life is is slowly he's got a hand out of the ground right now he's not dead yeah is this his best season it seems like it. I mean, it I don't. I, I haven't been tracking Judy, but I mean, he's been great for the. I mean, great's probably a stretch, but good for the last three, four weeks here. And he's been hard to start for the last three or four years. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but Jameis Winston, since coming back, has averaged and has not had below forty yards, uh, forty pass attempts. And yeah. Watson only had that one time. He only had one forty attempt game, and Winston's already had three of these. Yeah, and this was 30, the most 46 here, but 30 man. for 46, 395. Um, and and Judy was a big beneficiary of that. But I mean, even Elijah Moore, uh, six yeah. for 66, and you know, he's he's been playable. Uh, Tillman yeah. 
didn't convert on this one, but still had eight targets. I love Cedric Tillman. Uh, yeah. So I, I like, like to see that Joku was, was good again. So um, Brown's still good in, a, in, in getting, and in getting uh, smashed by the saints here. Dennis Allen got out of town and the saints have life again. <laughs> so yeah. yeah. Can I just pour one out, please? I'll pour one out guys. All yeah. right. It's over for Nick Chubb. It's over. It's over. Oh, no. it's, it's over. over. Sorry, guys. If he wasn't going to get it done in this game against his bad Saints team, the rest of the schedule is not is is way harder than this game was supposed to be on paper, at least. He was at least it, eleven for fifty. So we're maybe we could you know. Yeah, the yard it. for carry is better than it's been. It's been yeah. For I'm, sure. I'm sad, man. I, it yeah. feels like they're forcing it to him. But G- give him a year. Give him a year. Let's see if he can get back and and be uh, be serviceable next year. So we'll we'll see what's happened. Then uh, let's keep let's go Baltimore Pittsburgh. This was a banger. I don't think we need to spend a ton of time here. Lamar has typically struggled against the the Steelers almost more than any other team, not named maybe Kansas City. Yeah. Um, but this, this I think he's one in five now against the Steelers, and mm-hmm. he's he's been hurt or. or COVID or whatever. So he hasn't played as many games for some of the rest of the division where I think, I don't know what the rest of the division record is, but he's got a great winning record against most of the other divisional players. Uh, But the Steelers have their number and, and, you know, hats off to the Steelers, man. Cause I, you know, I don't love this. I don't love the Steelers. I'm not a, I'm not a fan of the Steelers fans. They got fans everywhere, but like, I do love this organization and how they go about their business. They don't give a fuck what everybody else is doing. They don't care what anybody like they do what they do and they do it extremely well. Um, they, you know, they, they, they take running backs where they want to take running backs. They take whoever, you know, and then they bring in Russell and fields and they switch quarterbacks in the middle of the season. Uh, Cause Russ is back and was Russ has Russ been excellent in every game. No, but the offense is doing uh, a lot better you know, moving the ball and scoring more points than when, when Fields was out there. I think they should keep Fields around and keep kind of grooming them. Uh, but, you know, this was a, a knockdown drag out NFC North. Some of my favorite football to watch for sure yep. are these sort of games in this division where they're just black and blue, grind it out. They got Henry versus Najee and whatever you think about Najee. But um, he's such a Steelers running back and he's such this NFC North matchup running back. Uh, and I, I really enjoy watching it. You didn't get the output you wanted from Lamar today. Just again, a little off, and the Steelers did a good job of keeping him off, right? Um, did a good job from getting Henry from really going. I mean, still had five yards of carry, but didn't kill you. W- wasn't wasn't like, oh my god, what are we going to do about Henry? Um, Ravens tried to make it a game at the end. Uh, missed on the the two pointer uh, there with with um, yeah. So Mar had no one to throw to right at the end. Yeah. It's a tackle. It's kind of pathetic. Uh, yeah. Just throws um, to nobody. Zay saves your day with a, with a TD there at the end of it. Uh, but really not a whole lot to speak of offensively for really either side. Pickens was good again. Um, you know, yeah, I don't know how you can't team. take the under every time the Ravens play at the Steelers, man. I, yeah. I, I don't I know it. what the spread is, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that it's, it, it always seems like it goes under, um, and and the, and when the times that it does go over, I think that's when the Ravens win. So, well, which isn't very often. Yeah, yeah. I thought the Steelers were actually going to eat a little bit more because everyone's been going off against the Ravens' defense. But yeah, that's mm-hmm. just that division rivalry right there. Yeah, yeah. It's it's crazy. Um. All right. So Minnesota, Tennessee. Again, not going to spend a whole lot of time here. Minnesota got the dub, twenty three thirteen. Tennessee's terrible. Most would they? You think, are they the, who's the number one odds to get the first rep, first? Overall pick is it Tennessee or is it? I doubt it. Tennessee at least has a defense, man. I would say it's between uh, uh, the Jags, who I'm, I think it's Jags, but that's Jags, Jags cause, Raiders because the Carolina, yeah, yeah Raiders. Carolina is showing some life right now. Yeah, dude. yeah, I agree. All right, uh, let's go Atlanta, Denver, and mostly only because you know I want to give a shout out to Denver, the defense, and let's talk a little bow yeah. next year, and then then we'll wrap this show up with uh, the last two. Let's uh, do it. We can finally hunts. just because at the end of it, I wanted to talk about the rookies, quarterbacks in general. So yeah, yeah. man, let's do it. Um, obviously, the Falcons were a little bit of a mess in this game here. Didn't didn't get the offensive uh, output that they were looking for. Couldn't really get it going. Kirk, 18 to 27, 173, one interception. Bo Nix, 28 to 33, 307, four TDs. Uh, you know, look, Broncos have a good defense. Uh, they were playing at home here. 
and and just just a big shout out to them. They got they got Mims involved. They got Franklin involved a little bit. Yeah. Uh, you were seeing you were seeing some life out there. Cortland's still doing the Cortland things like just a, a, a fantastic start right now. Another seven for seventy eight eight targets for for Cortland. Uh, and Nix is, is shown the ability to get it done here. Mims had a TD in this one, two for two forty nine. Um, you saw Franklin get get a a, a target or two here. Uh, Javante Williams, four more targets. Uh, he's got to be second on the team in, in receptions at this point, I would assume. Uh, but the fact of the matter of, of what Bo Nix is doing right now and how he's getting it done and, and not a whole, you know, it's Cortland Sutton and, and who else. Um, so give me your thoughts on Bo Nix and this Broncos team, Alex. I'm loving it, man. Uh, you know, him and Jaden Daniels coming in with the most experience, it's showing, and I like seeing that because uh, it gives me hope for the future with a lot of these other quarterbacks um, in this NIL area where everyone's staying mm-hmm. a little bit longer. Uh, but with him specifically, uh, you know, I wanted to see if he could get a, get a connection with his former teammate, uh, Troy Franklin. You know, still just modest a little bit there. You know, a couple of catches. Yeah. We'll see what happens in the future. But uh, I think the best coach – what is Sean Payton of all the Ricky quarterbacks and he's mm-hmm. just pouring into him all of this wisdom and you can see it on the field with some of the like pre-snap uh, motion that he's able to do that some other Rickies might not be able to do or some of the stuff he's pointing out to the line like this guy's seeing some things that not all Rickies are able to see and so he's you know earlier in the season was having some turnovers but he's been able to clean that up and just make sure that they're being efficient and taking what's there because only five incompletions, even if if there were interceptions, I mean, that's nice, man. So he's Mm -hmm. running a really nice offense here and um, they, they have a stable of backs too, on top of having a nice defense. So they can kind of control the pace and pick their spots to really go for it. But uh, just really impressive, man. I, I slept on him because I was just, I was playing, I'll be honest. I was playing the numbers game. Like there's no way, all of these guys to be good. And I just, I just bet it was going to be not Nick's being good based on age, to be honest, but uh, man, he's looking good. Yeah. I mean, they've all, they've all been, you know, shown some signs of life and, and I'm, I'm more and more of the school of play fucking five years as a quarterback right now in, in college. Right. It well, just, especially it now seems, with the NI, NI, NIL money. I don't right. see why you wouldn't, <laughs> but it seems like it's an advantage. Like they, you know, yeah. all, all the analytics and, you know, you got to be good by 20 or whatever. And yada, it's like, no dude, these quarterbacks, they need to go out and they need to play, just play a ton. Um, and, and I just feel like you're seeing Jaden Daniels really reap the benefits of that. You're seeing, um, Bo Nix right now reap the benefits of that. Obviously Caleb Williams, just built a little different, so you know, got got three years and and, and probably could have used another year, but uh, and and Drake May's doing his thing at a, at a bit of a younger age. So I'm not saying it's the end all be all, but like, oh, you know, there's no way Bo Nix in the beginning of his career was so bad, like so fucking bad, like I I can't even believe like coming into this into that last college year, I was like I can't even believe that Bo Nix is being considered for a quarterback that. <laughs> you know, people are like even remotely excited about. And then throughout that whole season, he bought me in and it was like, damn, this, this kid's kind of turned it around, got rid of the interceptions and, you know, it, it dialed it in and went to a place where I think that was certainly the best fit for how he plays to the coaching offensive system that they want to run. And we're seeing both of each other kind of adapting to one another as far as Peyton and, and Nick's go. So, I'll throw it to Big D here because you are an Oregon, Oregon Ducks colors hard here, but I know you hate the Oregon Ducks. So how has your next transition been? Oh, uh, no, I, you know, I, I don't. I, I love Justin Herbert. He was a duck. So, you know, go, go with it as it may. Once once they uh, get out of the pond, then I'm then I'm fine as long as they take a shower. Um, but no, I mean, I, I think Nick's is great. I, I was trying to look up a stat while you guys were talking. I couldn't find it, but um, I have a feeling that he is probably hiking the ball um, maybe a little bit quicker than others. And the reason why I'm saying that is I think that he is using the, um, you know, what is it? They cut off communication at like the 15, 15 second or 16 mm-hmm. second mark or whatever. And I, I think that he's just very tuned in to whatever they're saying to him and him going out and executing it. Um, I don't, I don't know how much of defense reading that he's doing. Obviously it's, it's getting better, but 
I think Sean Payton kind of had a lot of um, rails on him. Do you mean like? Did, do you mean like how like a Bryce Young will wait till the very last second of a play clock before he snaps it? Yeah. Yeah. Like instead exactly. of doing that, he's way fast. Yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that he, you know, he's just from the time that you know they get they huddle up to the time that the ball gets snapped, or or even on a non huddle. I, I just feel like from a rookie quarterback perspective, it it just to me. The longer you wait out there, the, the more time the defense has a chance to read and get your get your your clues. And and with a rookie quarterback, you're not doing a lot of you know not all rookie quarterbacks obviously, but majority of the time, rookie quarterback, you're not having them do a lot of adjustments or or that you know. And and a lot of times your your offensive line, especially at the NFL level, is calling the blocks. Um, you know, you're you're unless you're a veteran quarterback, you're normally not even doing a lot of the block schemes out, outside of listening and maybe making minor adjustments. And so I think he's getting in there and just looking at the defense, getting the block scheme and hiking the ball, right. Instead of waiting to the end. And, you know, um, anyway, I, I don't, that's just my gut feeling as I didn't watch a lot of this game this time, but the last couple of times that I've watched, it felt like that was happening. And, and I think that's a, you know, um, I think it's a recipe for success, especially with a rookie, rookie quarterback. And I would also say that he's doing this with some okay weapons, but I wouldn't say any of them are, you know, I mean, Martin, uh, Sutton is Sutton has looked good with multiple quarterbacks. So I think at this point it's easy to, it's, it's okay to say that Sutton's a good wide receiver, right? Like, yeah. but, but I, I don't really feel like anybody has stepped up and, and taken like an alpha role in, in this offense, which is really exciting if you're a Bo Nix fan, because you know, once you get that and he's continuously sharpening, he's tuning, you know, his, his, his thing. Once he actually gets some weapons that can just break it wide open. Um, I think this offense could be even better. So, yeah. And I will say one last thing. Well, um, I know we're not going to spend a lot of time on here, but my favorite, one of my favorite plays today was when Javante Williams got picked up by his offensive line. And <laughs> yeah, they just the pushed him so far. Line. That was awesome. Yeah. That yeah. was awesome. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I've been very impressed by Bo Nix and, and, you know, you, again, I, I think those two humans being tied together was the best opportunity that Sean Payton and the, the quarterback going there. Obviously, if Caleb Williams would have went there, I think they could have been fine or, or almost any of those guys, but like the style of play, how Nix plays and what Sean Payton did forever with Drew Brees, I'm in no way saying he's Drew Brees. Um, he's, but he's, he's got ath- the athleticism to him that they're starting to, that they've been incorporating for a while. And, uh, you know, that's going to, that's, that's big for the rookie to be able to lean on that, to help move chains and keep drives going and giving him more opportunities to see things. So, um, Bo Nix has been great, man. I mean, he, he's, you know, everybody who's, who drafted him in that, you know, early to mid second is, is certainly reaping benefits right now, whether or not they want to stick with them, that's kind of their call. Uh, but as far as you know, the drafters of of Bo Nix, and I'm sure some people are are would would be fine with moving off. But I mean, all these rookie quarterbacks, I feel like I kind of want to s- stick with them, right? I'm not I'm not itching to you know. You we mentioned Jaden Daniels at the top, and it's like, hey, yeah, if I could swap Jaden Daniels for Lamar Jackson, I I may do so. Uh, but you know, none of these other guys have that have that juice on them just yet. So like, I don't I don't know that where we're at with quarterback plays. We're in such a transitional period with quarterbacks going from old guard to new guard you know where we're you know we've had you know Dak and and we've been hopeful of Trevor and you know we've got some guys in the middle there but you know it does look like maybe this crop could be a a part of that changing and all of them are pretty mobile which is kind of nice you know yeah you love to see it man it's a one in a lifetime draft class to be honest it's kind of crazy to think about it but if well, just we the production we're getting now alone is yeah is great. I mean, hopefully they keep it going. But this is the, the, the these teams are going to go into the next drafts not able to draft quarterback, and they're not mm-hmm. going to draft quarterback. So they're this is going to be their team for the next team uh, next year that they are going to be building around. So yeah, uh, it's going to be and fun. Denver, it's twenty twenty five for them. Yeah, I think for Denver too. Just last last point on Denver is that um, their offensive line is drastically improved as well mm. like and i think that's a massive reason why nix has had so much success is he's had some really 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 clean pockets not just like oh that's a decent pocket like he's had some pockets that are like it looks like a you're playing in indianapolis with a horseshoe like there's yeah. nobody around him you know like so yeah. 
Um, so, so good, good for Denver and that offensive line too. Cause I think that plays a massive, I mean, we know that I'm not spitting any kind of like gospel here or, or, or magical notes, but, but, you know, offensive line plays such a, uh, important role in the quarterback's rhythm. So, so yeah. good for them. Can I get you to take any of y'all's take on Estime? You mean Carson Steele? <laughs> oh, whoops. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. I mean, I, I, I like to coming out. I mean, I, you know, I don't, I don't think there's any way Javante Williams is there next year. Um, and I, you know, I think they're trying to see what they have in estimate here to, to, to on the back half of the season and see if they're going to, you know, I don't know where they stand with draft picks coming into this next year. I know, you know, they were kind of depleted for a minute there. Um, I don't mind them. I mean, I'm not doing anything crazy, but you know, third or a fourth round pick, if I could, you know, acquire him for that I, I i don't mind not me I've, i'm out I've, but i've been out so i'm, I'm good all right no i get the pass on it. i was hoping he would get more production than last week because he had all those carries but you know nothing really for fantasy that mm-hmm. you could write home about and then uh you know not much at all this game so no they were they were talking a big game with all those points you would think garbage time or anything he would get some work, so. yeah. He, he had a, he had a catch or two at the end there, I think. So, uh, all right, let's uh, you know, we can we can close up shop here. We're getting late in the in the clock. Um, let's talk Niner Seahawks since we have a Niner and a Seahawk here. We'll we'll probably skip Kansas City Buffalo, even though that was a great game. You know, Buffalo wins. I don't I don't know how much there is to discuss there. Uh, two good teams that you're going to see later as far as Kansas City Buffalo goes. Got, glad to see Buffalo get the win. Um, yeah, I'm glad to see it too, just because the, the controversy at the end of the game where, um, you know, they, they, they ended up all in holding um, and back right. in like the fourth and third. There's but, no way he caught that ball. Yeah, well, there's no way. It was, it was obvious. How they didn't yeah. challenge that one, or how the booth didn't review that is wild. It's, yeah, it's just, it, I mean, it just plays into the, the whole narrative, you know, yeah. narrative of protect Patrick Mahomes. Just like when Brady was around, it was like the narrative was protect Brady. Yeah. He's the everything went his shield, way. You yeah. Know? yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, all right. Um, obviously, Gino runs one into the end. My Niners take a loss to Big D Seahawks. Bummer. Um, hate losing to the Seahawks. I think yeah. they said 2021 was the last time that the Seahawks had gotten them. Yeah, I think it was 10 in a row. I believe a little but, bit better. Yeah. Then the balls on the balls on <laughs> Gino Smith to do the sleep thing at like motherfucker. Uh, you, you've never beaten the Niners, and now yeah. you now you're gonna like, go there's, sleep. There's still time left too. That was the thing <laughs> yeah, I was yeah. pissed off about. Like I don't I don't mind him talking up, but man, like yeah, I was um, only up by three. Come on, man. I thought the Hawks. I I, I love what y'all have done, but we, we have to remember that this is a huge changing of the guard for Seattle, and that they we we've talked about it on this show multiple times. They've probably been the most Jekyll and Hyde team. You don't know who's going to show up. They show up really good some weeks, really. Then you're like, damn, where'd that team go? Um, I love your. I love the head coach. I love the OC, but they're rookies at this, right? Yeah. You know, the OC's never called plays yeah. in the NFL before. The, the guy who's the head coach was an excellent DC for the Ravens. He's trying to build this team and figure it out. I thought you, you guys had a great plan today and, and, and you executed at a really high level um, for the defense. And, and that's, you know, you, you've got some very versatile players over there who can do a lot of different stuff. Um, and I think that really leans into his hand. He also has to get the right personnel of guys that he wants in there uh, from coming from that Raven system of, um, you know, kind of how they operated and what they did. You, I don't think you guys have like any marquee pass rusher per se at this point, right? Which is, yeah, you know, is yeah. going to be a, a, you know, they, he wants guys who can get after the quarterback on that D line. That was, you know, a big part of his success over there. Um, but uh, Niners, you know, I don't think there is a, the, the hammer that they've been, but I think any given week they could get anybody. I think they're still very much in the playoff hunt here. I love seeing JSN have another big day. I'm so fucking sick of people talking shit about JSN. <laughs> like, when's this guy going to – like, he's good. You're just not watching the games. Like, right. I, I don't understand what's going on. Like, you know, shout out to Memphis. Uh, but he was on Twitter, and we were like, stop trading away, Jackson Smith. Just relax. Stop playing, like, redraft. Like, he had a good game last week. I wasn't saying that that the good game is who he is, but, like – like just give my man some time let it happen like he was everything y'all needed today that was that was he was anytime he needed something jsm was there 
Um, yeah, he was moving the chains. He looked he looked really good. I mean, he's just, such a good player. And if you can if you get rid of Tyler Lockett and can get then get him some of those shots that you take with Tyler Lockett, mm-hmm. which he's awesome at, and we we saw that in the previous game that we've seen Seattle play. I just I think JSN is every bit of the player that we thought he was. Just nobody has any fucking patience in this game, and everybody wants to play this game like it's redraft, which is such a silly mentality to go with. Like, give JSN some time. There was some context of why he, if you look at the back half of last season, he was pretty decent. He had a wrist injury coming in. You know, they, 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 again, now you're in a huge C- Seahawks transformation here. Grubbs never called plays in the NFL before. Like, they're they're trying to figure everything out. Uh, J- JSN is is X twenty four points today, eleven targets, ten receptions, hundred and ten yards. Uh, wasn't, wasn't able to get in the end zone at all, but DK came back, so DK was out there, and that's what you know. Well, DK's out there. JSN's like JSN before the week before that 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 blow up game that he has. I think he was still wide receiver twenty four. Right. You know, through through the season, right? So, like, I I I just. These these are the things that drive me crazy about dynasty of just how quickly like this motherfucker was the the wide receiver one a draft class ago and y'all are just ready to crumble that shit up and throw it in the trash so fast uh, and I just obviously I hate that he was he was good for the Seahawks today to get them a win uh, sure. but you know I, I I love I think JSN is is a buy 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 um, and you know I don't know how much how how you if you can even buy him at this point but. Um, and I think DK DK is the same way. I, I think DK's role in this offense and how they're going to, I think they're going to keep, end up keeping DK around. Uh, I you think would know so too. I mean, me. he's impressed me this year with, with him having less DK melt calves and be yeah. more DK Metcalf. Um, <clears throat> I think there's been a few times where people are really trying to get under his skin and sometimes, you know, he's responding a little bit, but, but for the most part, I, I got chippy out there today and he came running in and I'm like, but yeah, what oh are you yeah. doing? Get the fuck oh, out of here. Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing, man? Like he, he's definitely kind of, kind of changed things up. And I, I think, you know, you, you hit most of the, the high level points and I'll just say that, you know, Seattle was coming off of a buy, just like San Francisco was coming off the buy when they played up in Seattle. And so that kind of gives the advantage to the team that's coming out of the buy. And, and I just think that this coaching staff needed time, right? Like, I think there was a stretch there. The Seattle played three games. The opening, you know, the opening schedule was like, um, you know, they were pretty hot and then they played three games within 11 days. And it, it, it's just like on a new coaching staff, that's almost impossible <laughs> for them to, you know, to not, to not, you know, to put in the right kind of schemes and make sure people are going there. And, you know, they don't even have the play, the full playbook yet for their defense on the defensive side. They're letting go linebackers that we don't have a linebacker that we, you know, yeah, starting center just retired, like starting center ago. retired right before the game. It's just <laughs> like, you know, there's all kinds of crazy shit going on um, there. But, you know, I was I was um, I was pleasantly surprised, obviously. Of, 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 I honestly said, I think about halftime or so, I, I was just glad they showed up because I really thought uh, there was a chance that they were going to get blown out of the building just the way that they've been playing. But I also mm-hmm. said that they're so heckle and jide, right? Uh, you know, Jekyll and Hyde. Yeah, there we go. Uh, they're, they're, they're so, you know, yin and yang um, right now that I'm like, oh, I hope the right team shows up. And they did. So we'll see how that goes going forward. I'm off of Charbonnet. Um, I just, he, he's had enough opportunity for me where I just, I I feel like he's he's a third down back more than a, and then a I mean, a third. He, he's a he's a running he's back a three, three in a team gotcha. in comparison to a running back two. Um, he, you know, I, I think you kind of saw that today with a lot of the, Play calling Walker stayed out for that short yardage stuff and the stuff that Sharps did get. He just, you know, he just didn't play well on him. I don't know if he's got an injury or something, but it, you know, he, he just seems to be one of those backs that if he doesn't get like 10 or 12 carries in the game, he's just not going to get in rhythm um, and not, not really going to break much. So, um, so from the offensive side of the ball on, on, um, on Seattle, I, I thought they, they looked really good. Obviously it helped quite a bit at the end that Bosa went out because otherwise, you know, yeah. he was, he was, you know, creating havoc for our, our, our patchwork um, offensive line, but uh, and on the other side, man, I, I I was so happy to see CMC hitting those hitting hitting up against the line, and you know, I guess testing out. I don't know, like Shanahan looked like he was just like fuck your Achilles, just get in there and just <laughs> yeah, most, you know, like <laughs> got his nineteen like, attempts, five yeah. targets. Yeah, I mean, he was 
he looked good. Um, I, I was a little disappointed with Debo's production. Like he kind of yeah, Debo doesn't, Debo, look, doesn't look right out there right yeah, now. Yeah, there was something something up there. Um, and obviously Jennings, you know, yeah, he matched there. JSN. He had his own eleven for ten. 11 Jennings for 10, is it, yeah. If Jennings can stay healthy, and I said this uh, maybe the last public show we did two shows ago, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like if he can, he is going to be a huge part of what San Francisco does down the stretch here. And this is the these are the like he you saw. I mean, we've been seeing it for a while, and they they, you know they don't he doesn't get used like he has been in in the last couple of games, or at least through the playoff run last year too. But he comes up big and ha- third and Jawan is, is, uh, you know, is the saying, yep. is a saying, um, and, and this is, this is, if you can go buy him and, and put him on a team that, that needs another wide receiver for, to, to go try to win something, I, I think he's, he could give you a really good chance for, and obviously going into next season, like I would love to see, you know, Debo forever, I think, has been the engine that runs San Francisco. When Debo's going and they're doing the shit with Debo, and he's like, nobody wants a part of him. And yeah. and it just it hasn't been going. And that see, it feels like fundamentally where Shanahan's operating this offense is kind of changing uh, with the addition of Pearsall and bringing back Ayuk. And I do think you know maybe we might see a departure of Debo. And I'd love to see Juwan be the be the one or two out there, and Ayuk and and Pearsall be the three. Um. But I think Juwan's going to have a big role uh, from here on out and moving into next season. He's earned it. Uh, I, I love it. So anyway, Alex, me and me and Big D have been talking. So give us hey, some thoughts here. Squads. Uh, yeah. Um, no, I I was wondering what the price on Jennings might be. Uh, but yeah, man, uh, uh, like like what I'm seeing here, uh, even uh, another Ricky AJ Barner, uh, you know, we don't give too much tight end love at all, but. Uh, you know, taking over for a no fan injured there. Uh, he's has him some decent little output in some other games, but uh, overall, man, like, uh, you know, big D with Charbonnet last year when Walker was out, I wasn't too impressed with Charbonnet's just production, just didn't do too much. Yeah, uh, no big games at all, like mm-hmm. none at all. And you'll see yeah. a Mason, you know, in CMC's now, he'll have big games and. He was like a late pick, and Charles was a second rounder. So it's like you kind of expected more from that pick. So right. you know, hopefully they're not regretting it. But I think they just like having that, not you know, like having that a, a guy they can rely on if Walker goes down. Potentially, well, I mean, the, it was the previous regime too was the Sharps yeah. pick, so it wouldn't be surprising if they they go in a different direction. And and uh, you know, I I don't know what his rookie contract is or. Um, <clears throat> yeah, but. he's got time, but, but, and, and yeah, elephant in rooms, this is a deep running back class. We shall see. Yep. We yep. may yeah. think that now, but we shall see. Uh, That's before, true. before we wrap up, shout out to Xavier worthy, getting some, getting some good run in this game, looking like a receiver out there. I like to see that. That was, that was nice to see. Uh, I know mm-hmm. you're a Texas guy. Were you a Xavier worthy guy, Alex, or not so much? Yeah. Um, I've got on player profile. I got him as one of my guys, but it's also my son's name is Xavier. So I'm super <laughs> biased with the Texas UT connection graduating from there as well. So, uh, but uh, yeah, um, with no, with no Rashi rice, like I, I want more, I wanted it sooner, but it still was a Ricky. And you can see with just even the first few games, they had a plan with how they wanted to use them. So, uh, they, they, they ran, about they me with, with worthy is just his, his, um, like his his inability to know when he's doing sideline catches, like he, I don't know what it is. Like his, I feel like we've seen that a few times this yeah, year. Yeah, it's, it's, it's been more than younger months. players a little um, bit. With with Worthy in, in in particular, it's like he, for some reason, uh, he. I mean, I, I I like what he's what he's been putting out there, but it, it's just it's just kind of an oddity that, uh, um, I, I don't know, maybe you know, NFL, you know, as a rookie, it's it's a big. <laughs> It's got to be a massive transition, so I'm, I'm, yeah. you know, I'm not, I'm not down on them per se. It's just, uh, it's just I, something. That I, this is like I the second or third time I've noticed. They came it. in with such a, they, they, they thought they had such a, uh, a stash of riches for Kansas City, and then all of a sudden they were looking around, going, <laughs> "Fuck, Worthy." We, we thought we were just going to kind of do those end arounds and take a shot here and there with Worthy, and now. We need to try to figure out a game plan with him. But it, this was the game where it's like, hey, you know, we got Juju back in there. We got Hopkins kind of integrated. And now I think, you know, I don't, Worthy's not going to be out there being able to be a focal point right away. And and I thought, 
you know, he had he had a couple of big catches in this one and a TD. Um, I, I like I like seeing it. I think I think you know, it'd be interesting to see if they can run it back with Hollywood next year and try to get another year deal and then bring Rashi in. And I'd like to see this whole thing as a, a full strength to come back in and and you know, kind of see what Xavier Worthy can do. But, you know, people are already out on Xavier Worthy. They, they either want to tell you, I told you so, or just, you know, show you a stat that says, well, if a rookie hasn't gotten to this point, then he's pretty much not any good. And it's like, I look at all that shit as like, these are things that just be broken. I don't give a fuck about this number of 500 yards for your rookie. And then here's the ones that have gone on after. We're like, I don't care. Like, it just doesn't matter to me. Like, What's going on on the field? The speed is evident, even in the NFL level. It's there, and he's way different than the the, the other speed guys that we've seen in the NFL. He can actually run routes. Like, yeah, he's, he's not John he, Ross. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's a good <laughs> route runner. Uh, right. You know. Um. So, anyway, shout out to John Ross. Yeah. You, well, we've we've, long. we've run long. Anybody got anything else they want to comment on before we get out of here? I think, uh, oh, Alex wanted a little a little QB discussion, like, right? Like, Is that what you were saying? No, no, we got it. Uh, we got we're it, right. Just how all the Ricky QBs potentially hit, and this was one of the best classes. Uh, but yeah, no, um, I think that's pretty much it, man. Because like like you said, I mean, all these they can't do this, they can't do that. You know, no one thought Bauer's going to do what he's doing now. You know, breaking all kind of Ricky records. So it's like, let these other Rickies go out and break some records, you know, break them old, make something happen. Yeah. Uh, but uh, when are y'all going to start doing your Ricky content, like full blown? How long uh, are you I mean, probably, probably not till January. We've been, we've been getting after it a little earlier than usual, yeah. but um, you know, we'll, we'll go full, full blown, you know, once playoff football is on yeah. probably. There you go. Yep. So. Yeah, man, uh, it's, a, it's been an awesome season. I love it. A lot of action. Um, you know, I thought uh, a lot of these teams started a little bit slow, and then some of them just really just hit the gas, man. And uh, I know the running backs have been hitting, which is crazy. A uh, lot, you know. Return of the backs, baby. Yeah, yeah, I like it. I think that's been kind of the theme theme here this season. But uh, no, we got you know another month left too. to see if they hold up. Yeah. Yeah, there's oh, been some some pretty brutal injuries. I mean, there are every year, but it just seems like there's been a few times where um, you know, you feel like you you feel like a team's on a bye just because there's so many freaking injuries, man. So yeah. Uh, oh, oh, I'll just ask: Are you gonna buy Bryce Young? I'm I've already bought him a couple times. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think he's cheap enough for you know. Um, I, yeah. I think how cheap? I had cheap as hell. He's super cheap. Yeah. Like I'm not giving up on him. I mean, you know, people want to, people want to throw him under the bus, but it kind of like the JSN argument, like he, you know, there's a reason why he was drafted really high. Um, and it wasn't just, you know, Zach Wilson obviously was drafted really high too, but I think if we go back and we look at Zach Wilson and the jets, um, we might be surprised. It may, he may have been, he may have won more than sir Aaron Rodgers or Ooh. sir Dar- Sam Darnold. Uh, so, um, uh, but, but, not that that's a great comparison for Bryce Young to be compared to Zach Wilson. <laughs> I'm just trying to say that, like, he, he, to me, he's still got enough talent there that, um, I'm willing to get him. I think I got him for a second in one yeah. league and it's going to be a competitor second. So it's a late second. And uh, I got him thrown in on a kind of, we talk about the sprinkles of the cherry on top of a deal. I got him thrown into one of those on a, on a deal that I did recently. There you I go. Remember what the, the details are on it, but, um, the cost right now, and the upside of me being, able, I, you know, now in the long run, will, will I say that I would hold him if he starts to play really well and his his price goes up? Probably not. I probably will move off of him. But but as far as buying him, yeah, I definitely am buying him right now because it's so cheap. I need I need that that voice to go down an octave or two. That's my only problem. When you, when the mic catches him on on his cadence, he's like, yeah. Ah! Six. <laughs> like, yo, deepen that shit up. Come on, man. <laughs> have have, have Leggett uh, say it, you know? Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Darker yeah. room. Darker yeah. <laughs> He's got that awesome. I love his accent, man. It's All right, so, y'all. So, we'll catch you next right. time. Later, buddy. Peace.